All right, folks, thanks for coming out and joining us. Um, I'm Staff Inspector Sekou Kennebrew, and in just a moment we're going to describe for you an uh, uh, anti-violence initiative that unfolded throughout the better part of last week in the Kensington area. It's what we call East Division here in the Police Department. Um, in doing so, we'll be joined by our many partners that helped uh, facilitate that operation, and we'll describe what the operation was and what we got out of it and how it may have had impact. So um, just real quick to make a few acknowledgments, uh, we are – of course, joined by Police Commissioner Danielle Outlaw, and we'll be hearing from her. Um, we're also joined by Deputy Commissioner Dennis Wilson, who's, who's around a, a full complement of <laughs> full complement of commanders from narcotics. Chief Inspector Kelly, Inspector Fredericksdorf, Inspector Taylor, uh, Staff Inspector Catalini, I believe <laughs> Captain Bullock's here, <laughs> Captain Pendleton from Citywide Vice, and Captain uh, O'Connor from the Gun Violence Task Force, and so that's us. Uh, in terms of Philly PD, but we also are joined by some very important partners. So from the FBI, uh, who also t uh, participated in the operation, we have Assistant sp uh, Acting Special Agent in Charge, Mr. Dave Carter. From the DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, we have Special Agent in Charge, Mr. Jonathan Wilson. We also have from the Office of the Pennsylvania Attorney General, Mr. Uh, Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, Mr. John Kitzinger and from the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, ADA Paul Riddell. So um, I'm going to turn it over right now to Commissioner Outlaw, and uh, she'll give some brief remarks, and then we'll continue with the show. Commissioner? Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What you see on the table represents and illustrates the absolute worst of what people have been dealing with in their communities. These drugs with an estimated 1.2 million street value um, the seized $75,000 in cash and the 20 confiscated weapons also represent the results of data-driven, strategically informed investigations by professional law enforcement officers undergirded by the input of community voices. Input of people sharing information with officers to help make their communities safer. What you see on this table also reflects the strength of collaborative partnerships. The work was supported by federal and local partners, and I want to personally thank each and every one of them for their collaborative work. This three-day initiative, which resulted in seizures and hundreds of arrests, targeted areas with a heightened level or risk of gun violence in the East Division. It also cross-referenced areas that were identified as those with illegal drug sales. Ultimately, having these items on this table means they are off the streets. It means that they will not be ingested by someone who is struggling with substance abuse disorder. And it also means that the heroin, the cocaine, the crystal meth on this table will not be taken as children pass or by a relative in a child's home. These guns will not maim or kill anyone. The seizures here represent officers and collaborative partners' commitment to do what they can to support the people that they serve. This work underscores my vision for the department to continue to be a leader in collaborative partnership with other agencies and people in our communities. And to discuss the Warren Initiative in detail, I am going to turn that over to Commissioner Wilson. But I want to, one, thank everyone for being here again, and this really represents what you will continue to see moving forward. I appreciate everyone's collaborative efforts, and I really look forward to making sure that we not only maintain and sustain these relationships, but that the public is aware of what's being done uh, behind the scenes to make sure that it's safe for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. And next you'll be hearing from Deputy Commissioner Dennis Wilson. He's the Deputy Commissioner of, of, of uh, Field Operations. Um, and he's actually covering patrol operations and special operations at this point, so he's wearing a lot of hats. But in my introduction, I neglected to uh, mention someone else who you're going to hear from later. He's Mr. Kurt August. He's the assistant director of the Police Adis Assisted Diversion Program that comes out of the managing director's office, and you are going to hear from him a little bit later. I also want to acknowledge uh, our host today, Director Garvey, Captain Massacoy, Lieutenant Walsh uh, from the Office of Forensic Science, uh, who allowed us to even be here and use their facility, and also indispensable in the collaboration of, of course, the Mayor's Office of Violence Prevention, as well as the Office of Criminal Justice. So I wanted to make sure I make those acknowledgments as well. And now I'll turn it over to Deputy Commissioner Wilson. Thank you. Good afternoon. You heard the Commissioner Outlaw talk about our partnerships. We have great partners in Philadelphia. 
this isn't just during the initiatives. Day in, day out, we're all working together. The individuals you see in the room and their organizations working with our Narcotics Bureau to fight narcotics. Um, last year alone, the Narcotics Bureau planned and implemented nine of these initiatives. They got great results on everyone, so much so that it, the chief's often surprised that, as he says, how good of a job his guys do out there, and it is surprising. Almost a million, 1.3 million in street value. This isn't all the drugs. There's a lot more. They brought up a, a, uh, an amount to represent some of what was seized. But this is every initiative. They've gotten great results. Lots of illegal, dangerous narcotics, lots of guns. In this initiative, we got 20 guns off the street. This initiative was three days long. The planning and pre-work probably started two, at least two weeks before that. They did a lot of surveillance hours. They made purchases all over East Division, our 24th, 25th, and 26th District. So they were prepared on day one to go out and serve search warrants. They searched 19 properties in the 24th District, 17 in the 25th District, 23 uh, in the 26th District. They recovered over $75,000 United States currency. Um, like I said, a million, right under a million, $1.3 million street value of drugs. And always important to us are these guns. Getting these guns off the street is huge for us. So all these initiatives are successful in gathering illegal guns off the street, and this is no exception. PAD was mentioned, our police-assisted diversion. Last year they started, they joined, they partnered up in, the, in, this, uh, in these initiatives. They review every arrest of buyers of narcotics and try to get those individuals the help they need to, uh, to solve their core problem so they're not on the street buying drugs and putting themselves in danger. Um, specifically in this initiative, we had city, our citywide vice, they're in every one of these. Our Intelligence Bureau played a big part, Gun Violence Reduction Task Force, East Detective Divisions, our patrol operations, DEA, FBI, and all of our Narcotics Bureau, Philly PD Narcotics Bureau. And the totals of, of those arrested, 127 dealers, four of those were juveniles, 111 buyers of narcotics, 42 vice, primarily prostitution arrests, one or two part ones and one part two, and narcotics recovered pretty much the whole spectrum, marijuana, K2, crack, crystal meth, PCP, heroin, cocaine, assorted pills, and Suboxin. And again, it was a three-day initiative from February 12th to the 14th. We'll be starting to plan our next one. We do these based on complaints from the community and spiking violent crime. Sekou. today is going to be Mr. Kurt August, the Assistant uh, Director of the Police Ass Assisted Diversion Program. As I mentioned, that comes under the Managing Director's Office, an uh, indispensable component of these type of initiatives. So I'm going to turn over to Mr. August. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I know uh, people are eager to ask a series of questions, so I'll try and be brief. Uh, again, my name is Kurt August. I'm the Assistant Director of Diversion Deflection here in the Managing Director's Office of Criminal Justice. In the spirit of collaboration and really trying to take a, a public health approach to addressing the complex unmet health needs in our community, we were able to successfully divert 14 people at the point of arrest directly into targeted social services through a network of partners like Prevention Point Philadelphia and the Salvation Army's New Day to Combat Human Trafficking as well. Um, we worked closely with Captain Pendleton and Citywide Vice around those efforts and the Narcotic Strike Force during these initiatives to be able to try and take proactive steps where when people are diverted at the point of arrest, they're facing no further penalty, no court costs, fines, fees, potential probation sentences, things that can help uh, often amplify people's conditions of inequality, spiral their life further out of control, put them into a state of desperation. Instead, we take that opportunity to proactively connect people to social services um, that are customized to the needs of the individuals um, and try and get people connected to help, get them connected to the appropriate supports that we hope will help you know, some of our most vulnerable citizens turn their lives around proactively. 
Um, so we're, we're happy and honored to be able to partner with the police department on this work. Uh, we do this year round, um, but these uh, initiatives create these three day windows where we're able to interface with uh, a large number of people and try and again uh, identify folks that are really willing and able to accept help um, from us right at that point of contact with the police. And for questions, I'm happy to turn that over to one of my partners in this initiative as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Mr. Augustine. All right, and now we will have brief questions and answers. We'll try to keep it brief out of respect, actually, for your time, because I know that many of you are going on at four, and you might still want to get uh, some B-roll of the table or what have you. So based on what the question is, we'll try to determine who the best person is to answer it. It will almost undoubtedly be someone, a uh, commander from narcotics, but uh, let's just see. I'll, I'll step out of the way because it will be someone else to answer. So, uh, three days. How are you introducing yourself so I can get to know I'm you? I'm Tina. Always. I'm with Fox 29. Nice to meet you. And I'm just a photographer. I'm not a reporter. Since you buried a brother, a brother to work. <laughs> um, three days, that's a long time. Work gets on the street. How do you guys pull this off in order to do a three day hit to round all of this up without your plans going south? So the timing is critical. We have to build Just probable cause. Sorry. Thank you. You're right. The timing is critical. We have to build probable cause based on complaints and observations and investigation. So that's the two week prior to the initiative. Then we all decide at the right time, what days we're going to carry it out, and do we have the legal framework to do so. Signed affidavits, approval from district attorneys or U.S. attorneys, and that's when we, we do uh, hit these locations. However, the market is so widespread out that we can hit one area without necessarily shutting down another area. So it does develop over a number of days before the word gets out. And some people think that not me, I'll never get caught and they continue to operate even though they know we're out there. We maintain a constant presence in Kensington, and it's always an effort on us to get rid of these guns to give some relief to the neighbors in that, in that community. What's your first and last name and your second name? Joseph Frederick Stork. Common, Common spelling. spelling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, F-R-E-D-E-R-I-C-K-S-D-O-R-F, and I'm an inspector with Narcotics Bureau. Just, a point, just to piggyback on that a little. Two years ago, they, I'm sorry. A year and a half or two years ago, they did a 16-day initiative in East Division. The buyers kept coming back. They arrested some three times before it was over. They were arrested, they were processed, they were released from custody, come back a second time, come back a third time before that was over. So we have no uh, shortage of, of buyers in that area. It's huge. If we could, if if, Kurt, if Kurt's uh, operation works the way it's supposed to, and it has on many people, they don't come back to buy drugs. So we're reducing the demand for drugs. And for a buyer, arresting them only with nothing on the back end isn't going to stop them normally from doing drugs and coming back and purchasing drugs. How important is the community speaking up? Well, I, I think it's important, like for any of us in the room, when we go and we pay for a certain service, we don't expect the service provider to tell us the type of service that we want. Um, I've said it many times, we get our authority to do our jobs from the community, and if we don't take the time to listen uh, to the community and f really figure out how they want us to provide the services that they're asking for and they're, in fact, paying for, we'd be chasing our tails. So I think it's important that we get it right. Um, no one's perfect, but I think it's important that we get it right the first time. And that means going to the source and asking the community, what can we do to best serve you? And this is monumental, and it's been done long before I've gotten here, but it's monumental not just because of the volume, but because the community spoke out and we were able to deliver. And that's what makes this most important. Of 
So one thing we started last year, the Narcotics Bureau started this. We partnered up with the health department. They send out basically their foot soldiers. They go out to different organizations and give additional naloxone. So if there's any, if a buyer, the worry is the buyer won't have their norm, normal supplier because of the good work narcotics is doing. There's a possibility of o overdosing. So they get out. We trust them that they're going to keep this confidential. The chief and the inspector reach out to them, tell them where we're going to be working, when they get out ahead of time, week ahead of time, and flood that area with naloxone. So that, that's one thing we started last year. PAD program's huge. We started doing that. And uh, that, that's about what we can do right now. We've got to worry about confidentiality so we can't let the community know what we're going to do ahead of time. sellers, seeing this now will put them on alert, so they may be a little bit more cautious now, but for how long and how much time will you guys wait between each bus so that they're not aware for the next bus? So we won't tell you exactly when. we. Like I said, we did nine, and we've studied this. We looked at before an initiative, during the initiative, and after an initiative. And uh, during, of course, it's really quiet because there's so many law enforcement resources in the area. But normally we find a pretty quiet time for at least two weeks after the initiative. So we'd like that to go longer. We'd like to be able to do more of these, and we are trying to do that. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for uh, coming out. Are we Commissioner. able to get general vicinity areas yes, at all? Yes, in fact, we were covering them, but this map was, was here, is here deliberate, uh, deliberately. But uh, it's